get frogged. Yeah, that's just my opener now. The Game Boy Color is by far my favorite Game Boy. Between the nostalgia of it being my first Game Boy and its vast library of games that hold up well even today, it's unmatched in my eyes. That said, I've always thought that the GBA is actually more comfortable with its wide form factor. But with the small viewing area for original Game Boy games and the cartridges sticking out like a weird growth, it's not ideal as a replacement. Enter the Frog Boy Color, or FBC for short. With the FBC, I had five key goals. First, it needs to be based on real Game Boy Color hardware so original cartridges and accessories can be used. It should have a wide form factor like the GBA. It'll be compatible with the Q5 GBC screen kits for that large viewing area. It will support USB-C charging so that I can bring it on trips without having to worry about bringing extra batteries. And finally, I wanted to incorporate stereo speakers to fully take advantage of the Game Boy Color's audio capabilities. Being a project largely focused on form factor, it made sense to start with the shell design. Starting with a basic shape with cutouts for the screen lens and some buttons, I iterated and iterated and iterated some more until I finally had something that worked well. In the end, it took me over 50 iterations of front and back shells to get to the final shape. Additionally, I prototyped two test fit PCBs during this process to verify the position and size of cutouts for the various buttons and ports. At this point, I was feeling pretty confident in the design and started ordering test prints in both resin and SLS, which is sintered nylon, to sanity check that the design would actually work in materials that I'd want to use for a final build. Finally, I made some tweaks suggested by RetroCNC to make it all CNC machinable, internal fillets, clearances, etc. But I'm getting ahead of myself showing this off. The second big part of this was designing a new PCB that integrates the key parts of the GBC. Luckily, schematics are available for the original GBC from sources. This looks like a lot, but given my goals, there's a lot I can cut. LCD driver circuitry? Q5 don't care. Q5 don't give a sh**. Gone. IR? More like, I don't care. Gone. Audio amplifier? Redesigning it. Get out of here. Power and battery LED? Frogulator says, get the f out of here. That leaves me with the bare minimum circuitry to use as a starting point. Because the power and audio circuitry are the most complicated new pieces of the schematic, I de-risked the project a bit by designing discrete prototype boards for both of these. For the power circuit, I was able to leverage my existing work on the frogulator and reuse the circuits for the 5 volt rail and battery indicator. To make the prototype easy to build, I just added a footprint for the frogulator. The other circuitry comprises two new pieces. One is a battery charger built around a TI-BQ2407 series chip, which also handles power path management for charge and play support. The other is a soft latching power switch, in contrast to the GBC's slide switch. The benefits of this are twofold. Because the full system current no longer goes through the power switch, it's much less susceptible to carbon and dirt buildup on the switch contacts, a common failure point on the GBC 25 years after it was released. Additionally, it greatly simplifies the shell design by virtue of using a simple push button. Audio represented its own unique challenges because of the goal of supporting stereo speakers. Most amplifier chips I found with speaker and headphone output only support mono speaker output and attempting to route the headphone output through standard speakers results in quiet audio. Rather than using separate speaker and headphone driver chips, I opted for dual LM4875 mono amps, one each for the left and right channels. This results in a simple setup and great audio over both speakers and headphones. By the grace of Frog, both designs worked on the first go, minus a bodge for the headphone switch on the audio board, and it was time to move on to the main board. This turned out to be more tedious than anything, painstakingly rebuilding the core schematic with the CPU, RAM, cartridge reader, etc. in KiCad, and integrating my new circuits for power and audio. Thankfully, a member of the community going by the name Gekio has released KiCad footprints for many of the original parts, which cut down the work required substantially. With V1 of the schematic designed and checked, it was time to order some boards from the fab. At this point, my wide Game Boy Color dreams were close to fruition, 
quarter progress charts and DHL tracking numbers danced in my head until one day the boards arrived and a couple bodges later the first frog boy was alive. I was ecstatic at this point. After two months of nearly non-stop work, my grand vision was becoming a reality, but there was still work to be done. V1 had a couple issues, including somewhat noisy audio, a flaky CPU reset circuit, and an on again off again soft latch power circuit that needed to be revamped. But after three more board revisions, we finally landed here. Let's build one. Now is a good time to thank PCBWay for their help on this project. When it came time to make this video, I reached out to them and they were gracious enough to supply me with the PCB, this machined aluminum front shell, and this resin printed back shell that's been dyed purple, which provides a great sampling of the different services that they provide. Aside from some screw threads on the front shell piece here being tapped a bit shallower than specified, the quality on everything is overall excellent and the prices are very reasonable. They're especially my favorite source of resin printed parts and have yet to misprint a frog boy shell, which is actually quite surprising when you do the front as well, which has these very thin sort of sections here around the D-pad and the buttons and such. So thank you to PCBWay and with that out of the way, let's get to building. The first thing we're going to do is harvest some parts from an original Game Boy Color. Using a hot plate, you could also use low melt solder or a hot air station, we remove the CPU, the RAM, and the crystal. Next, using an iron and a solder sucker, we remove the cartridge slot, and the link port. Setting those aside, we'll grab the back half of the shell and remove the metal cartridge shield. If the back of your frog boy is plastic, you'll want to keep the original screws for later. Next, we'll assemble the PCB, which we'll do in stages to allow for some testing along the way. To start, we'll install the components for the main 5 volt and 3.3 volt power rails. Once installed, we'll test that they're working correctly. Solder the red wire of one of the batteries to the VCC test point and the black wire to any ground point on the board. Here, I connect to pin 32 of the cartridge slot. Using a multimeter in DC voltage mode, probe the main 5 volt output and the main 3.3 volt output, and confirm that the voltages are correct. Now we desolder the battery and move on to the battery circuit. When I redesigned the power switch circuit, I made this flex patch board for older board revisions, but the release version will include these changes. The main thing we want to test here is whether or not the power switch works. Temporarily solder one of the batteries to its terminals on the board. Again, with your multimeter in DC voltage mode, confirm that the 5 volt rail is currently reading around 0 volts. Press the power switch once. Then check the same points again and confirm that it reads about 5 volts. This tells us that the power switch circuit is working correctly. Now we can move on to the main pieces. Install the crystal, CPU, RAM, 
and LCD connector. We'll also install the associated bypass caps and reset circuitry. Now we once again solder up a battery, plug in the screen ribbon cable, in this case the Funny Playing RetroPixel 2.0 kit, and press the power button. If everything went well, the screen should come to life with the familiar boot screen. This is arguably the hardest part, and it gets a bit easier from here. We'll next install some bits for the link port, the power and charging LEDs, and the audio amps. Do a bit of cleanup, then flip the board over, install the USB-C port, 5.1K resistors for negotiating 5 volts, the input fuse, and the parts for the battery indicator circuit. Again, do some cleanup, then move on to the biggest parts, such as the link port, cartridge slot, headphone jack. This is a great time to clean the nasty flux residue off of the board. I did that by using an ultrasonic cleaner, but you can use whatever method you prefer. Finally, we finish by installing the tactile switches for the buttons. and the potentiometer for volume. Now we move on to final assembly. Start by soldering wires to the terminals on each of the speakers. I recommend color coding the wires for the left and right terminals so it's easy to remember where to connect each wire later on. Next, take the front half of the shell and carefully place the LCD with driver board in the front opening.
Turn the shell over and place the buttons, which come from a Game Boy Advance SP. Membranes, which also come from an SP. And the two speakers. I use a small amount of double-sided tape on the front of each speaker to keep them in place. Take the PCB and carefully place it into the front of the shell, being sure to thread the speaker wires through the cutouts to the left and right of the cartridge slot. Tin the speaker pads on the board and solder the speaker wires to them, making sure each wire color corresponds to the same polarity. In this case, yellow to positive, blue to negative. Very carefully solder one battery to the battery terminals on each side of the board. Place the 3D printed battery clips, ensuring the holes in the top corners align with the screw posts underneath. Then place a screw through each of the clips into the front shell. Once the clips are in place, flip each battery into position and securely place them into the respective clips. Now take the back half of the shell and place the cartridge shield into it, with the two metal tabs lying over the top two screw posts. If using a plastic back, use the screws from the original GBC you set aside earlier to secure it in place. Otherwise, use 4mm M2 machine screws. Finally, place the power button, just the brightness button from an SP, into place. Put the back shell on top. Then secure the shell with 4mm M2 machine screws. And just like that, the Frog Boy color is now complete. So where are we at this point with the Frog Boy color? It plays original cartridges and can connect to any other Game Boy using a link cable. It's wide like a GBA, but in fact a bit smaller, more similar to a Game Boy Pocket, and even thinner than that. The large Q5 screen is front and center, making for an ideal viewing experience. It has USB-C charging, ready to make not one, but two spicy pillows in parallel. And it has loud, clear stereo speakers so I can annoy everyone around me. So there we have it, five main design goals checked off, and I'm really quite happy with the result. Would I like IR functionality back? Of course. But this isn't really the end. The plan is to treat this as a sort of living project, with small updates and refinements here and there. So nothing is ruled out, but don't let that stop you from building one now. I've shared the PCB and shell on PCB Way, and built out an extensive GitHub repo with build instructions, troubleshooting tips, build materials, plus STLs for the volume wheel and battery brackets so anyone can build one of these for themselves. What might stop you is that I am by no means a professional electronics designer. Lithium batteries are dangerous when not handled properly. This is absolutely not a good fit for your first, second, or even third soldering project, and so on and so forth. If none of that deters you, give it a go. I think the results truly end up speaking for themselves. Thanks for watching.